Welcome to 3D Printing News. I'm your host, Mike, and I try to keep everybody up to date with the latest happenings in 3D printing or anything I find interesting every single Friday at 6 a.m. Arizona time. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get into this week's episode. So first things first, I just want to wish everybody a happy new year. Hopefully you guys had a good 2025. For me, it was fantastic, right? We almost hit 10,000 subscribers on the channel. That was my long stretch goal. Of course, I always had a goal to get monetized, to get like 5,000 was really my main goal, but we are here sitting at just over 9,700, or I guess just under 10,000 subscribers, and we should have hit 10,000 this month. So my long stretch goal for this year is 50,000. Now that sounds like a lot, but as you get that snowball turning, it gets rolling, it becomes huge. So if you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, you're interested in 3D printing news, 3D printing projects, Star Wars projects, just really anything 3D printing, even laser CNC, that stuff is coming to the channel soon. Be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this week's news. Lego in Creality have come together to <laughs> unveil this Lego 3D printer modeled after the ever so popular Ender 3. Now it is in their Lego idea stage. And as of right now, it only has like 394. As of this recording of the video, it only has 394 supporters. I would have thought this was going to be a little bit more popular, but maybe this is more of a sign that Creality is falling out of popularity more so than like the Ender 3 because I feel like a lot of people who have the Ender 3 would be on board with this. I thought it was interesting that, you know, typically Lego would probably get mad for people 3D printing their own Legos and now they're coming out with a 3D printer potentially, right? It's just the idea stage, but the way Creality marketed this, it makes it seem like they did partner with Lego in order to announce this. Maybe they're just putting out a feeler in the idea stage to see if it's something that would actually sell well. Um, I'm sure it's gonna hit the thousand sub supporters by the end of it because they got 100 supporters in like the first five days, they give it like a 365 day extension. So I'm sure it'll get a thousand supporters, but will this ever be made? I have my doubts. So moving on to Creality's newest 3D printer, we have the Spark XI7. Now this has been teased over the last few weeks and it actually goes up available for pre-order on January 6th. So January 6th, you'll actually be able to order the Spark i7 for $339. It does look like there's an early pre-order period from January 6th through the 20th, and you get a few free things. Like it looks like you get two rolls of filament. Um, this is for the multicolor bundle, or it looks like for their CFS bundle. One thing I wanna say about this being only $339, are we in the age where maybe they'll stop overcharging for these CFS systems? $339. At that point, that's just a 3D printer and now you're getting a CFS on top of this. So like, we're at a point where they should stop charging 200 to $250 for these extra CFSs and they should sell them for like 100, $150. That goes for Bamboo Lab, everybody. I really would like to see that in 2026 with all this tool changer stuff. Those AMS, CFS, MMUs get more or they will get cheaper over time. So if you wanted the 24 color print, now you have that available. Of course, those offer the waste option, but with the tool changers being so expensive, I would like to see those get cheaper to buy separate and really um, introduce a new color palette to a lot of people as far as like printing with eight colors, 16 colors, 12 colors, all of that. I would like to see those get cheaper from 3D print manufacturers. But regardless of this, you know, with the Cobra X, with the Spark X7, i7, that's kind of what I would like to see. But a little bit about this, it does look like they're going to offer three different versions. I could only see the $339 for the i7 color combo, that's what they're calling it. You had the autofill combo, which is like just a two spool system. That was pretty interesting. I saw that maybe that's only gonna be like 300 bucks, 280 bucks, something like that. And then you just have the base i7 so th i think they're hearing people say like hey we want more than one spool because we run out of filament especially on these larger prints because this is a 260 by 260 by 255 build plate i believe so you can actually have an auto refill system here with that so it reloads mill 
mid print, but we don't know the price of that one. Moving on, Creality seems to really be embracing AI. It says new colors, new design. They actually have an LED light bar with a whole bunch of different options on there where it basically says the status of your prints and they've really been pushing their new like spark ai thing i think it's also with like the creality print 7.0 i know bamboo lab already does a lot of this stuff on their maker world website and you can like purchase things with like tokens and credits and things like that it looks like creality is trying to do the same thing with ai now the interesting thing here with the spark x i7 or whatever they're calling it just it's, it feels like a mouthful every time i say that but it says multicolor printing and has 50% less waste. But it's still like this CFS system. So what is this going to look like? I know some of you guys have mentioned that the CFS is going to be revamped and it's going, it looks like maybe it spits out a little, I thought it was gonna be like the little tube I've seen somewhere before, just like that prime line, but it still shows like traditional poop. So I'll be interested to see how this is actually working to get 50% less waste. What are they comparing that to? And still you have like the snap makers of the world and things like that. Like it's not gonna be 50% less waste. And traditionally I would say this is from like a Bamboo Lab A1, this is 50% less waste. But how are we actually saving that waste? The other thing that I thought was interesting is this is also going to a quick swap nozzle. It does have a lever, so it is a little bit different than the Bamboo Lab A1 and all of the new versions that have been all, of, all over their newest 3D printers, like the H-Series and the newest P2S and all of those that have the quick swap system. It looks like that's a similar version is also coming to Creality printers. Now moving on, Bamboo Lab, speaking of Bamboo Lab, they've actually shown off some more 3D printed shoe partnerships. Currently you can already get the Formism Arc that's already available on Maker World as it stands right now. You can go to Maker World and download that. And then they also have some more Formism Persona coming to live crowdfunding on their website, I assume goes live with crowdfunding January 12th to 2026. You also have the Formism Foam. The Foam series is scheduled to launch on Maker World Global Crowdfunding section in late 2026. I assume the Persona and the um, Foam are going to be on the Maker World crowdfunding website. I don't see why they both want to be, but maybe the Persona is on like Kickstarter or something like that, and they just don't want to mention it by name. Uh, moving on, we actually have the Coprint Quadro. This is another 3D printer focused on eliminating waste. It's a waste-free IQEX color 3D printer, or how would you say that? IQEX? IQEX? I don't know. I did. Sometimes even the English language is a little bit confusing, um, but waste-free. So the first thing when I saw this, I was like, is this going to be another situation where you cannot park the nozzle or the tool head all the way to the left or right hand side when you have that fourth color you know it's kind of being is this a different parking station the answer is no actually on their website when they were showing it working it it functions as normal right now you can actually go ahead and put a twenty dollar deposit down to get up to $200 off, but there was no official pricing that I could see on this 3D printer. The only thing I saw was a chart referring to the price of the 3D printer, basically showing that it's going to be less than the Snapmaker, but this is showing the advertised price of the Snapmaker at $999. Additionally, they're showing the Vortec at $2,800, so I think that's a little bit disingenuous, at least at that front, because the Snapmaker is selling right now for $850. Yes, retail price is $999, but they have yet to sell it for that $1,000. Same thing with the Vortec, that's actually like 23 or I believe $2,400 actually, and they're saying 2,800, that's like the ultimate bundle to get the max capability. So technically that should be a little bit cheaper. Not that it really matters. I think everybody making an educated purchase should know these things and it's all in the form of advertising. So I would guess it looks like this is going to be like, they're making the chart look like it's gonna be around $500, $600. That would be pretty crazy to have a tool head changer 3D printer at that price. Now, with this being said, it's showing like the bench bin or whatever this waste bin that was actually formulated by Prusa to do benchmarks. They're showing that it has the least amount of waste for 3D printers right now on the market. Notably, it does beat out the Snapmaker. It's showing 40 grams in less time. Still the same amount of waste, but less time. 
So you're looking at eight hours and 45 minutes versus the Snapmaker was nine hours and 50 minutes. I'd be curious to see if that's like, okay, we know how to tune our printer versus the Snapmaker, we're gonna run it at default settings. Again, these are kind of all like advertisements. Um, and I'm playing devil's advocate here for a lot of stuff. The other thing is we don't even know if this company is going to be able to launch a successful campaign. It is going to come to Kickstarter. You can get those details on their website. As of right now, I'm not exactly sure when it's going to come out, but I believe it is scheduled right now for late January. And lastly, we've talked about Atom Form here on the channel before, and they were coming out with a nozzle changing 3D printer. They have shown that they're going to be at CES January 6th through the 9th. So it does look like we're gonna have quite a few companies at CES showing off their stuff. Same thing with Creality. The printer is going to be at CES, and that's when it officially goes up for pre-order. So will we see the nozzle changing system? This appears just to be a regular standard 3D printer. And unfortunately, it's really hard to get excited for something like this at this point if they don't show the rest of the 3D printer. A single color 3D printer, those are kind of a dime a dozen now at this point. You have the P1S for $400. You have the Centauri Carbon LA $280. You have the Cobra S1, which is under $300, I think now, or it's like $350. Actually, I think it's like $350. I don't know. Those prices are changing all the time. My, my point is that you have so many different 3D printers that are so cheap, it's hard to get excited for that. But with that being said, guys, I appreciate you guys all for tuning in. Of course, thank you to all my members. As always, I appreciate you guys. If you guys enjoyed this week's episode, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below what you would like to see on the 3D printing news or what you're looking forward to in 2026. Again, guys, have a happy new year. Hopefully it's good to you, and we'll see you guys next week at the same time, 6 a.m. Arizona time. And also, before I forget, thank you to my members. So, have a good one.